All right, now we're going to move on to the next point, point number two, the problem of the KJV interpretation. Some passages interpreted by KJV appears to be teaching error. Yeah, what a liar. Continuing, the word advertise means tell. See, now he's going to define the words and try to mean say what they mean. Um, allege means prove and conversation means behavior. We're going to look at that one in just a minute here. Communicate means share. Take through means be anxious. Prevent means proceed. Now look, look at the example that he gives. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 1. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word... This is the word that's being spoken of. If any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. If you are married to a lost man and you are a saved woman, it's your conversation, your witnessing to him that's going to get him saved. That's what it's about. But look at the NIV rendering, which is actually a false reading. Look at this, 1 Peter 3, 1, NIV. Wives, in the same way, be submissive to your husbands, so that if any of them do not believe the word, they may be won over without words by the behavior of their wives. Uh, it's not, see, what it does there, it replaces the word of God. If any, it says, if any of them do not believe the word, they may be won over without words by the behavior. So they replace the word of God and they say, it's not your words, it's not you witnessing to your lost husband, it's your behavior. If you're nice to him. It's ridiculous. Totally ridiculous. And by the way, the King James Version there says, uh, if any obey not the word. Now if that word is the word of the wife, then that means that the husband has to submit to the wife. Think about that. Think of how the NIV has totally destroyed 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 1. And this crone, Billy Crone, the false prophet, he actually defends it. Incredible. But let's continue here. He says, To the average Joe, the KJV appears to tell women to win their husbands over by, what, by their what they say conversation instead of what they do behavior. Uh, duh. Yeah. Okay. I know of women that are good to their lost husbands, that are great wives, and their husband's still going to hell. Why? Because the wife doesn't witness to him. Let me tell you something. You'd be better off having an unhappy marriage with the wife continually witnessing to her husband and making him uncomfortable with his life that he's chosen. You'd be better off like that than having a beautiful, happy marriage, and you end up, the wife goes to heaven and the man goes to hell. Just absolutely ridiculous. Problem number three, the KJV omissions. This will be good. Some of the comparisons of KJV appears to be guilty of omissions of their own. And then he cites Jude chapter 25. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. Jude 25 in the NIV. To the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen. NIV. Oh no. And then he says, is the KJV trying to attack the deity and or lordship of Christ? Absolutely not. And I'm going to show you why not. Okay, here we have the Textus Receptus. This is the berries edition of the Textus Receptus. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and greatness, might and authority. The words, through Jesus Christ our Lord, do not appear in the Textus Receptus. So the, the NIV puts something in that does not appear in the Greek text that underlies the King James Version. So where did the NIV get this reading of theirs? Right here I have the Nestle's text. Excuse me, go over this way. Through Jesus Christ the Lord. So in other words, the NIV abandoned the Texas Receptus and went with the Roman Catholic Nestle's text. But I want to show you something else here. He kind of, again, Billy Crone shoots himself in the foot by using this verse. It says in the King James Version, to the only wise God. Look at verse 25. Wise God. To the only wise God. 
Look at the Nestles, to only God. Now, if you look at the thing that Billy Crone wrote, that's exactly what's there. So, you have a problem there. They remove wise God. <laughs> so, right in the thing, he shows an NIV omission and the NIV siding with the Roman Catholic reading. Okay? And what they do, oh, well, it's in there and, and, and that's a better reading then than the King James Bible. No. They just put it in places like that and remove it a whole bunch of other areas. Okay? No, it's not a better reading. But let's continue on here. All right, the next supposed attack is John 14, 14. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. KJV. NIV, you may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. And he says here, is this another attack on Jesus and his authority? No, <laughs> not at all. It's, it's not even a point. I mean, just absolutely ridiculous. All right? And, uh, and you say, well, but it doesn't say, you know, if you ask me anything. Well, who else are you going to be praying to as a Christian? Just nonsense. Uh, next one, Romans 8, 16. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God, KJV. NIV, the Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Is this an attack on the personage of the Holy Spirit? No, it isn't. The Holy Spirit's often referred to in the neuter. Jesus Christ is referred to in the neuter. That holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of the Highest. It, it's, it doesn't mean a thing. Again, he shows his ignorance of the Scriptures. Complete ignorance of the Scriptures. Just incredible. And this guy's a pastor, you know. Romans chapter 9, verse 5. Whose are the fathers, and of whom, are, as concerning the flesh, Christ came, who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. Romans 9, 5 in the NIV. Theirs are the patriarchs, and from them is traced the human ancestry of Christ, who is God over all, forever praised. Amen. Is this another attack on the deity of Christ? <laughs> I'm going to actually show you here, and you're going to believe this one. Here we have the Textus Receptus, and it says, God blessed. Exactly as the King James Version reads. Okay, it says in the King James Version, who is over all, God blessed forever. And the NIV says, who is God over all, uh, forever praised. So right there, it shows you, again, the Receptus says, it lines up perfectly with the King James Bible, God blessed. But now let me show you something. How about the Nestle's text? God blessed. So you see there his attack on Romans chapter 9 verse 5 in the King James Version is completely without foundation. It's not in the Textus Receptus and it's not even in the Nestle's text. Guy does not know what he's talking about. I'll tell you what, he's making a fool of himself. Next he says, note, it is because of passages like these that Jehovah's Witnesses and Mormons, among others, use the KJV to discount Orthodox Christian doctrine. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, the New World Translation is the Bible that the Jehovah's Witnesses use, and it's based on the same Nestle's text as the NIV, okay? And, and, and it's very similar to the NIV, by the way, too, in the way it reads. And the Mormons... Use the Book of Mormon to overthrow the King James Version. I mean, give me an absolute break. You know, talk about 1 Timothy 3.16 where the NIV removes God was manifest in the flesh. And then talk about the Jehovah's Witnesses using passages to attack Orthodox Christian doctrine. Yeah, yeah. Tell me all about it. His fourth problem with the King James Version. The problem of the King James Version versions. Some of the official King James Version versions appear to be not so official. Most people's modern KJV is probably not the 1611. It's probably the Blaney edition of 1769. Also, the 1611 edition of the KJV underwent various changes in 1613. goes through all the years. So which one is the official one? Oh, there were changes made? Well, why don't you tell your people what the changes were? 
You see these new versionists, they'll always throw that in the face of King James Bible believers. They'll say, oh, which edition do you have of the King James Version? Ha, 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 you know, we got you now. They try to make you think that because the new versions are always changing, that the King James Version changed too. Well, the King James Version did change, but it was spelling changes and the font was changed. That doesn't mean anything, okay? If you went back to 1611, God had the 1611 in the font that the people could understand and the spelling that the people could understand in 1611, and he updated as time went by, but the words and the doctrine did not change.